City Council meeting for Monday, September 10th at 7 o'clock. Uh, we're a few minutes late here because we just had our EDA meeting chaired by um, Council Member Abrams, so thank you for sharing a good meeting. Uh, and now we will be starting the council meeting. How's everybody doing? Good? good. Yeah, good. We had a good workshop. Uh, and uh, I want to talk a little bit on the headline about it's that time of year, council members, where school is starting, right? And so I noticed that we had a fire truck, a Maplewood fire truck, parked outside of an elementary school with a big banner, drive slowly, school starting. And I thought that was, was really great. Um, I'm going to make a few comments and then turn it over to Director Nadeau. Uh, and then the other thing is I was talking with neighbors across the street going down County Road B, and one of the neighbors felt that people were, even with the arm out and the stop sign, the cars were going around the buses. And so there's some fear there that when you have little ones, five, six-year-olds, they're not going to see them as they go around the bus. And that's kind of a scary situation. So I definitely want to caution all of you out there driving around bus time, which is a long, it's like between 6 and 8.30. Uh, and then again for two hours in the afternoon um, to watch out for kids. And Director Nodo, I saw, what else? You did some other things I saw. There's the, the speed sign, right, was down here on County Road B. And yes, I know uh, you've had some other efforts. Okay. Thank you, Mayor and members of the council. Uh, this is something that, as a public safety, we want to be uh, very out front and making sure that people are aware that we've got kids going back to school in a very short time here. It'll be a little darker out when some of these kids are traveling back and forth to school. And so as public safety, obviously, we've had our officers uh, where we think children are, are crossing. Uh, we love that we've got our public safety partners, our fire department out there, um, helping to encourage safe driving as well. We have uh, recently met with all of the, be the bus companies. Uh, yep. This is one of those statutes that if you go through a school bus arm, it does not actually have to be witnessed by a police officer. And we reminded them of the law. We gave them the forms they can fill out and instructions on, on you know, making sure that if they can, they can get a license plate number and the description of the driver and some other things because we want to be very proactive about this. Uh, making sure that you know safety is in the minds of all of our motorists out there, particularly as it applies to uh, school zones and kids crossing safely and that type of thing. Okay, thank you. So everybody, watch out. Thanks for it to our um, police department for being proactive. I think it's great you're out meeting with the um, new bus drivers. You probably heard there's a shortage of bus drivers in Minnesota, so we probably have a lot of new drivers, right? Because they're trying to recruit whoever they can, and I think it actually pays pretty well. So, but uh, you know, that's a big vehicle to be uh, full of children to be driving around. So, um, so everybody be careful out there. Next, I hope you'll join me in the- uh, May I just- Council Member Juneman. Sorry, I just that's wanna okay. add one thing about the opening of school. I presume you probably noticed on the news that the governor was at Carver oh, School yes, in Maplewood yes, yes. for the first day of school. So in addition to the principal and the teachers and everyone, he was there greeting kids and what a great thing to happen in Maplewood, especially at Carver School. They've really worked hard to get there, so I thought we should acknowledge it. Oh, sure. If there's anything like that, jump in. I think that's uh, fantastic. And they made a little video, so if you're on Facebook or Twitter, they have it around, and there's a the governor at a Maplewood school. So what a great thing that is. All right, thank you. With that, we'll do the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Next, we'll have a roll call by our city clerk, Andrea Sint. Councilmember Smith. Here. Councilmember Abrams. Here. Councilmember Zhang. Here. Councilmember Juneman. Here. Mayor Slavik. Here. Thank you. We will not do the mayor's address on protocol because we have no public hearings tonight. So that brings us to item D, approval of agenda. Is there a motion? Is there a second? Okay, it's been moved by Zhang and seconded by Abrams, approval of agenda. Is there any further discussion? Uh, Council Member Juneman. Uh, under council presentations, I have uh, three items. The fall cleanup, our medicine drop-off box here at the City Hall campus, and uh, announcement on Ashtray education. Ashtray or ash tree? Ash tree. Okay. <laughs> I you said ashtray. I thought that's well, a different. That's, that's a different topic. <laughs> okay. Anybody else? I was going to do one on uh, BRE visits. We had one of those today. 
And Council Member Smith? I'll do one on the candidate forum. Candidate forum. Anything else? Okay, good. I, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Hearing ayes, all. The agenda is approved. Approval of minutes. First, we're going to do the August 27, 2018 City Council workshop minutes. Is there a motion and second? I'll move the uh, workshop minutes. Second. It's been moved by Abrams and seconded by Juniman. Approval of the August 27, 2018 City Council workshop minutes. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Hearing ayes, all the workshop minutes are approved. I'll move the August 27th City Council meeting minutes. Second. Thank you. It's been moved by Council Member Smith and seconded by Juniman, the August 27th, 2018 City Council meeting minutes. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Hearing ayes, all the August 27th City Council meeting minutes are passed. Next, we have appointments and presentations. First, we will have the council presentations, which we just talked about. We will start with Council Member Juniman. Thank you. Uh, these items are all found in your um, September newsletter, but I thought it would be worth featuring some of them for, so people don't miss them, which means you should be reading your Maplewood Living, but just in case you're not. First item is the fall cleanup. Remember, we don't have a city cleanup where you bring things to us in the fall. We have special scheduled uh, pick up item, pick up of bulky items at reduced rates. Um, in the months of October the 1st through the 26th and all you need to do is contact Republic Services at 455-8634 to schedule a special pickup and then secondly as long as we're talking about cleaning up um, and with school starting um, sometimes people think oh yes I should get those medications out of the house hmm. so remember that we have a medicine drop-off right here at the City Hall campus over at the night entrance to the uh, police department it's free, it's 24-7. Um, almost anything medical is accepted except for sharps and needles and those kinds of things. That's obviously separate. But anything else in a bottle, a tube, an IV bag, whatever, those things are all accepted in that receptacle anytime you're driving by. It doesn't get any better. And finally, we've been having ash tree discussions and we know it's on that road, unfortunately. So the Nature Center, uh, through our Nature Center programs is having a special program on Tuesday, October 2nd from 6.30 to 8. And it's called Ask the Forester. So you can kind of help, help decide if your tree is truly sick or not and what to do about it. And there'll be tips on how to identify it. So I think that might be of help to some people. Excellent. Tuesday, October 2nd okay. at the Nature Center. So Ask Tree. Thank, Thank you. you. Yep. As Cash Council Member Juniman mentioned, I just wanted to hold up the um, Maplewood Living newsletter, and I know Joe Joe's here. See if we get the camera on the the, <laughs> the living. <laughs> there we go. And so, uh, nice job, Joe. Uh, it's always good to see what's in the newsletter, and we know this goes into every home. And so, a lot of you, this is your main source of news about the city. Hope you'll take a look at that. Uh, today, uh, we had a BRE visit, uh, city council members, and I just want to share with you a little bit and then ask um, uh, city council manager and Chief Nadeau if they would like to share as well. Um, we always have that little company in Maplewood that makes post-its, uh, and we had a visit, yeah, <laughs> we had a visit with them today, and primarily with Doug Stang, uh, so it was the chamber folks as well as us, and it's, it was really a good, wide-ranging discussion. You know, we always start out saying, how's your relationship with the city, which he said, excellent, and then we kind of get into some of the issues, and I thought some of the more um, sort of interesting things that he talked about was everything from deregulation. You know, deregulation actually benefits 3M because they can do more things. He talked a little bit about the permit, permitting process and in Minnesota, that's a, a difficult process. Uh, talked about the tariffs, that they're not affecting them uh, so much. Talked about the new CEO uh, who is Minnesota uh, living. I mean, we, he's in was a was a Woodbury resident. Um, we've had two European heads of 3M, and so it's good to have uh, now a local uh, be be the head of 3M. And really, I thought it was a really positive visit. Um, you know, we always uh, think of we like to mention 3M as in Maplewood. We like to talk about 3M, but we don't often get to talk to 3M because they are so big. So big. Besides people we might know in our neighborhoods, uh, City Manager Coleman, what did uh, what were your takeaways? 
Um, I always appreciate having uh, a few moments to sit down with a representative from 3M because that doesn't happen very often. So we really have to take advantage of that. Um, in addition to the items that uh, Mayor Slog mentioned, uh, the things that sort of uh, resonated with me, uh, we asked a question about workforce development and if they had problems hiring good people. And the answer was the professional level positions they don't have any trouble hiring for, but they do have um, trouble kind of doing the tradesman kinds of jobs, the plumbers and the mechanical people and administrative assistants. Uh, we ask about were they do they come to work trained and ready to go and that was one place where they weren't trained and ready to go was the administrative professional type position uh, but I imagine that's kind of like walking into a foreign country when you start working at 3M because it's so big and lots of things going on but I thought that was interesting I also um, I was pleased to hear that they um, have a good relationship with us and particularly our building department because that's who they interface with the most and they were um, quite pleased with our responsiveness and the ability to work through issues with them. Um, they did talk about the new ramp and how they, they had made a promise at one point that they'd never build a ramp and they had to build a ramp. But it was a really good conversation. I was a little bit disappointed that they didn't want the bridge yeah. that goes along with the Gold Line project. Uh, and they're still a little skittish about that too, so we have some work to do with get, getting their confidence up about how that's gonna work for them and keep them safe, because that's their primary concern is security. So those were, I guess, my takeaways. Yeah, they told us that 15,000 people now come onto the 3M campus every day, so just their traffic patterns are difficult or challenging to manage, and then adding in you know, the Gold Line can How's add that in a gonna different. Interface? different layer yeah. so and the other thing if you see somebody from 3m you have to compliment them on what's different about the building has everybody seen they wrapped mm -hmm. the building mm -hmm. and what does it say it says uh it's about believing and creativity yes and it just looks fantastic it brings that updated look to kind of an aging building uh director nadeau why don't you tell us your impressions well, first of all, I was uh, amazed that there's 15,000 people a day that's on that campus. And uh, we've had a great working relationship in public safety, as they have with other city departments. But the one thing that was really impressive to me was their level of reinvestment in their own campus, uh, whether it's new buildings that are going up, whether it's redesign of the campus to kind of accommodate that traffic flow of all the people they need to move around, or just uh, really getting into some of these buildings, he said, that were built in the 50s and 60s and doing major remodels and obviously they've got asbestos and they've got all of these other things to to have to deal with but i was really encouraged by the level of redevelopment on their complex and their commitment to staying in maplewood thank you so thank you um, both for being there and for the chamber for their leadership and Madam Mayor. Uh, council member juniman you said there's a new ceo now i'm waiting for the day when you come back and say there's a new ceo and her name is. <laughs> well, that day probably is coming, I would think, and uh, especially as they get more more STEM and more people in the upper the, upper Then echelons. we'll know they've made it. Yeah. Breaking the glass ceiling. So thank you. And then uh, Council Member Smith, the uh, candidate forum. Yes, thank you. I just want to congratulate all the candidates who participated in the City Council and Mayoral uh, candidate forum this week. I think it's uh, such a huge service that the League of Women Voters does for the city to um, help get to know the folks that are running for office. Uh, you know, I, I believe strongly that elections matter and the people that we uh, choose to lead at the local level and, and, and at the state and federal levels are, um, you know, it's, it's really critical that folks pay attention, get to know the folks they're voting for and, and be informed. And, uh, so I thought it was a, a great forum and a great opportunity to get to um, see people in a little bit different way. So, and I know it's a lot of work, so I really um, you know, thank the candidates for participating, but really thank the League of Women Voters for the work they put in to make that happen. Do you know, Council Member Smith, is that being rerun? Yes. Does yeah. anybody know the schedule, what that might be? Monday, Wednesday, and Friday mornings at 8 a.m. on Channel 16. For That's what I was told anyway. Yep. And I believe and it's also available for streaming. Uh, yes. Yeah. There's a link? There's mm -hmm. a link on our web page, and it's to, through CTV. Okay. And Great. you can watch that anytime on your computer. Good comments. Thank you. 
Next, we'll have the administrative presentations, a council calendar update by our city manager, Melinda Coleman. Uh, thank you, Mayor Slowick. Um, the purpose of the cal calendar update is to just uh, remind the council of the things that are coming up on our next agendas, and also it allows a uh, time for the council to bring forth issues or concerns that they would like staff to do a little research on and report back, either through um, some kind of written report or through a workshop. So with that, um, our next workshop is going to be um, dedicated to code enforcement. And uh, we're going to have some ideas for you on a more proactive approach to code enforcement. We'll be presenting that uh, before the council meeting on the 24th. On October 8th, you're gonna get an update on the urban agricultural ordinance, if there's been many takers on some of our new initiatives or not. Uh, and look at uh, tree program options, and also an update on rental housing licensing. On October 25th, we have, we're gonna have the Tobacco 21 Advocates, uh, which will include uh, kids from our schools that evening. And then at a later date, we'll bring back, we'll probably have a public hearing and we'll bring back the business community for that. Um, so stay tuned on the next step there. Uh, rental licensing, as I mentioned, has been scheduled. Um, the EDA responsibilities and possible program areas, we're looking at probably the first part of November for that, unless something else, uh, time freeze up, we'll add it. Um, the tree program is scheduled. Uh, review of building permit fees, we're going to handle that through a report, and that will be um, sent to you uh, between now and no later than the next meeting on September 24th. We do have... Um, a good idea of what other communities are doing with their building permit fees and we also have a recommendation on uh, solar panel permits. The, also we've invited District 622 and 623 superintendents to council meetings and those are scheduled and they're coming up uh, I think in the uh, October uh, City Council meetings. We also had been asked to create a pedestrian safety plan and that is being worked on uh, with our public works uh, director Steve Love and his staff and we have uh, we will have a report for you on trail trimming program how we do that and how that gets scheduled and uh, you know the kinds of work we do every year on that for your um, edification and then we're going to look at um, we're also going I have a handout for you this evening on preparing a marketing plan for a marketing plan for cost sharing the July 4th, and I think at the uh, council meeting in August, uh, it was suggested that we tie that in with our business uh, engagement breakfast, and we are gonna do that, and we have a little uh, synopsis for that that I'll hand out for you th this evening on that. Uh, we also have some upcoming community events for uh, your information. We have the REC run the 5K on September 29th, 9 to 11:30 on October 27th is the Halloween bash at the Brew and Trump Farm from 1 to 3 p.m. and December 7th I hate to think about that already <laughs> but Santa's workshop is going to be at the MCC YMCA from 6 to 7:30 p.m. so with that council I'd be happy to take any questions or um, items of interest that you'd like us to do some research on you know, one that uh, I'm interested, City Manager Coleman, is in crashes. You know, I've had to ask for... Accidents? Uh, yeah, accidents. Accidents. Uh, in two different areas, and one I've requested, which I think we're all interested in, is the number of accidents on the overpass over 36 in English. I did get that today, and I wondered if you could oh. forward that to the it, rest of the council. I believe that that wasn't an FYI back month ago or so, but I'll resend it because it, it keeps coming up and I actually um, go that way a lot to get to my father's house and it's bad. It it, the bad. visibility there is really not very good. So I'd like to, you know, I don't know if this, if we can sort of put it on the list, I don't know if it necessarily has to be a presentation, but what are some options on what we can do there? You know, my understanding it's a MnDOT controlled it is. bridge yeah. and so we would have to talk to <laughs> MnDOT, but people, you know, people just tell me, well, if you just took like a 
carving knife or whatever, a saw, and you sawed off half of the thing, then I could see. So could you just do that? And you know, <laughs> we all think it's really simple, right? But we don't know maybe if the when thing might fall down. Bottom, it might not if be. you did that, right? And yeah. so, well, I, I think that it is an important issue for community because I do hear quite a bit about that. Um, and I think Mr. Love responded to you with that, or Mr. Nadeau, I can't remember which, gave you the accident report, but Mr. Love gave you the contact information. And we can certainly reach out and see if we can have a conversation with them about that. The, you know, the one thing that I can say is we have crash information. It's not that dramatic. But the complaints and the concerns that I've heard from people, it's, it's an important issue. We probably don't have cardiac arrest statistics from people driving at that well, intersection. Well, it is. It is. It's, it's, it's tough. Chronic. Yeah. It's chronic. It's chronic. And uh, with bad weather coming, it's going to get worse. And the, the other one was just, and I don't know if we have our hot five highest accident rate areas, but um, on McKnight, which turns into Lakewood between Larpender and Maryland, and people go 45, but they actually go 50 or 55. The homeowners there are really struggling with the, how to even get out of their homes because they can't. They're going so fast for them to take a left, and there's a, and even taking a right. And there's also that curve as you get up onto the bridge. Yeah. But McKnight, and Maryland, is that what you said? Yeah, it's between Maryland. Maryland and Larpenter, so that whole stretch in there. So, and I'm in contact with the public works director about these things, but we, I just want to know residents that we're thinking about these things and that they're on our radar screens. The only other one I had, and then I'll call on council member um, Juniman and Zhang was. Um, is I would like um, for two reasons to have a report and I'm not sure if it needs to be in a workshop but I think it would be helpful for us to hear about this and be able to talk to somebody about the homeless population in Maplewood. Um, we know they're there, we know they're on the trails, we know they're in the parks, we know they're sometimes by the car wash. Uh, we, there is a librarian at um, the Maplewood um, Library that um, they are, they have once a week meetings with homeless people about their needs, you know, and that's it should be at that county level. So it's not our responsibility, but I think it's in a way it is right that we need to know about it. And if people are showing up at the Maplewood Library um, homeless and need things, just kind of what is our role in that? And kind of we I guess we want to be informed. Mm -hmm. I'd like to have the council be informed on that. Okay. So, Council Member Juniman. Um, thank you, and I, now that you brought that up, I have had two people that live up in Legacy Village say that they've been approached by homeless people in the park up there. And I, I said, well, I, you kind of have to handle that for yourself, but I would just say, you know, I, I can't help you because you <laughs> couldn't handle I mean, if you're not walking your dog for one thing, you probably don't have your money on you, but I, they feel bad and they don't know what to do. And so if we talk about it, then at least if somebody approaches us, we can say, well, this is what we know. And yeah, maybe some strategies mm -hmm. for residents. Okay, thank you. Um, two things. Number one, I noticed that tonight on the WCCO TV news, they are going to be addressing um, um, vaping and all of the new devices. They showed a little picture on the promo of how they now have vaping devices that um, sort of masquerade as other things. So parents are having a hard time ne negotiating that. So as we're gonna have this tobacco conversation, that is one of the big pieces apparently that's very disturbing to school officials and parents. I think called jewels or something like that. I don't know, but there's one that looks just like a little, um, almost like a little cell phone. Oh, so it's hard. But the other one I wanted to bring up again was the, um, I think I asked, and, but I didn't really say what I thought, um, but now I've got an example of some place where they do this. I, do, I believe it's in White Bear Township. When a business leaves, the sign comes off the building. So I think we need to look at our sign ordinance and see what that's like, or at least the large display signs at the street. Because um, almost, especially up by the mall, it would be very disconcerting to be someone coming off 694 to go to something that isn't there when you get there. <laughs> so I think it's kind of bad advertising, shall we say. So I think we should just look into the possibilities. Thank you. Anything else? Okay, uh, Council Member Smith. Mayor, I just wanted to let you know, I just uh, saw in the newspaper there, there uh, <coughs> uh, our, our good old friend, uh, Farmer Chief Schnell, 
is uh, likely to be hot on the case on the fact that there is a goat wandering the streets of Invergrove Heights oh. right now. <laughs> That's a biggie. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to let you know that the Invergrove Heights Police Department issued a statement today saying that they know that there is a goat on the lamb. Oh, <laughs> very busy over there in Invergrove Heights, isn't it? <laughs> Good. Thanks for that update. <laughs> yeah, I'll keep you posted. Yeah. <laughs> Goats wandering around Maplewood is okay. No, no, as long as they're fenced in. Yeah. <laughs> All right, on to the consent agenda. <laughs> Items on the consent agenda are considered routine and non-controversial and unusually are approved in one motion of the council. Unless anybody has anything on there, we can take a motion. I move approval of the consent agenda items G1 through six. Second. Oh, sorry. Is there any discussion? Oh. Okay. I uh, apologize. I didn't see your finger in the air. Okay. Uh, so number two is that um, uh, 400, I'll, uh, the city manager can talk about the 400 uh, women mayors uh, were invited to the White House for a one-day conference. Um, and really what it's about is meeting with federal officials. Now, do we have something at stake federally right now? Yeah, we have two big things at stake and they are our BRT lines um, and transportation. I know um, Council Member Smith, you're involved. You're, you're our um, member on the Gold Line. Um, I'm the um, chair of the PAC for the Rush Line and having um, stronger relationships with federal officials um, could help that because we know in the East Metro area, you know, we're struggling, you know, when the, when the Botano and the Southwest hog all that money and sit on it, we want them to give us a little, and maybe by having some federal leverage, we could do that. That wasn't a really a very grammatically correct sense. <laughs> right. I think you know what I meant. <laughs> Council Member Abrams. I also wanted to say what an honor it is that our mayor is being invited to the White House to meet with other mayors, and what a great opportunity to share and get some feedback, and you're right, these transportation issues are huge, and the fact that you get to go to Washington DC on our behalf I just think that that uh, um, that it's a wonderful opportunity so I Thank wanted you. to highlight that because I think that uh, it it's all good for citizens of Maplewood when we're looking at trying to get transportation here so um, I'm looking forward to your report when you get back on on what it was like okay. thank you so, thank you very much for doing that okay. all those in favor say aye aye, aye. hearing eyes all the motion passes on the consent agenda and did Andrew did you get who made the motions so it was I think council member Juneman made the motion and and council member Zhang did the second and mayor I'm sorry I neglected we probably should make an announcement on number six Number six, uh, so uh, city manager uh, Coleman, we have a change of our regular schedule. If you'd like to yes. talk about that. Uh, thank you, Mayor Slawick, members of the city council. Um, due to some scheduling issues with a couple of our council members, we are rescheduling our normal October 22nd council meeting and workshop to October 25th. So instead of Monday, that week, it'll be on Thursday, same time, workshop at 530, council meeting at 7. Will that be posted on the website? And I, yes. Okay. okay, good, thank you. Good point. Let's see, we have I, unfinished business. We have J, this is our last items of business, and it's only quarter to eight. And also, if you were on the consent agenda, don't feel like you have to stay, uh, but thank you for coming. Oh. Uh, the resolution providing approval of the 2019 pre preliminary property tax levy and setting the 2019 budget public hearing date and time is our new business item number one. And our second is an ordinance repealing the Police Civil Service Commission, which takes five votes. So with that, City Manager Coleman. Uh, thank you, Mayor Slawick, members of the City Council. Um, tonight is a culmination of the work that uh, staff and council has been doing to prepare for the 2019 preliminary tax levy and setting the 2019 budget, public hearing date and time. Um, the proposed tax levy that is being recommended by the staff is 3% increase over the 2018 final tax levy which results in an estimated 3.7 city property tax increase on a median value home in Maplewood. Um, we have um, the last couple meetings talked about options. 
Um, I understand that at the August 28th meeting there was some discussion about uh, what would it look like to reduce the levy. Um, I personally would recommend that we not uh, go tonight at a lower amount than 3% because this is the preliminary levy. Uh, we can reduce the preliminary levy um, in December when we adopt the budget, but we can't go up. Um, one of my concerns about going under 3% is that then we're not uh, putting the same amount of money we'd hoped to put into our uh, reserve funds. And if we start going down that slope of not keeping that up, it gets harder and harder every year to go back to do that. And one of the things that concerns me is that it lessens our opportunity to react to emergency situations or unplanned things. Um, I don't know if any of you read the paper on Sunday, but there was a big article about all the big boxes um, that are challenging their taxes and they're winning pretty big awards and we have a few of those big boxes mm -hmm. and so I know Ellie put a little bit of money in the budget for that but that's one of my concerns about not keeping the reserve fund um, up at that higher level and in keeping with their financial policy but other than that that's my recommendation you are the folks that represent the residents of Maplewood and it is up to you to decide what that is um, but I will let Ellie go through this again. I think this will be the third time she's presented some, some options for you to consider. Um, and I, so I will let Ellie uh, work through that with you and then we can a uh, obviously answer any questions that you might have about the information that's being presented tonight. I'm hoping that this is all sort of coming together very clearly for you and that you'll have a, a, a pretty easy time navigating this information and making a good recommendation for, uh, for the community for the 2019 levy. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And um, I just want to say to the council, as you know, this is an annual process for us. It really comes up fast, but um, I'm sure we're going to have a thoughtful discussion and, you know, it's one of our biggest responsibilities is setting the levy. Ms. Paul Seth. Thank you, Mayor and Council. We do have a PowerPoint for this, and I will try not to belabor because we have um, discussed this several times, but I wanna go through the, um, the highlights of what, what we will be doing tonight. The Council is being asked to consider the preliminary property tax levy. So you won't be adopting the budget, you won't even be setting the final levy, just setting the preliminary levy, which is the maximum that you are willing to adopt. Um, for taxes payable in 2019. So as city manager mentioned, you may reduce it in December when you adopt the final levy, but you may not increase it. Um, again, she mentioned our recommendation is for a 3% increase. We also have other options at your request. Um, we will walk through those reasons uh, for our recommendation, but whatever the council decides is best for the community is what we will, what we will do, and that's our, our job to make that work, and we will do that. So to start off with, you have seen this slide before. The 3% levy increase brings in additional property tax dollars of $644,000. Um, the big highlight from this slide is you can see that we are no longer levying for the ambulance fund, so that was a, a really big help this year in putting together this levy um, at, at a reasonable increase. I won't go through too much of this, but the highlights again, uh, a big increase in workers' compensation premiums, a need for some IT uh, equipment and services, two new police officers. Uh, we are... Um, uh, the capital equipment line of $105,000, we are now paying as we go for park equipment as opposed to borrowing for it. So again, working in some of those debt reduction strategies, no matter how minor they are, and augmenting our fund balance. We've been working on that over the last few years. It was, it was really cut um, to the bone at one point, and we were trying to work on um, getting that back up um, for adequate, adequate cash flow, and we'll, we'll discuss that. But that is the that is the components of the six hundred and forty four thousand. So coming back to the fund balance, um, the cash flow needs. Yeah, as you will notice in the chart um, projected for two thousand and nineteen, this scenario includes the two hundred thousand dollar addition to fund balance. So you will see that by doing that, um, it brings the city just above the minimum requirements. 
The minimum target in the red is 41.67% of expenditures. That number isn't magic, it's five months worth of expenditures. Um, so that will, um, that will bring, as expenditures rise, so does the need for fund balance. It's really a cat and mouse game and it can be difficult. So one of the reasons why um, we're really working hard to build that fund balance up so that we're not constantly chasing that number. Um, we don't know yet how, uh, we have an estimate for 2018, but we don't really know yet how, how that is going to turn out. Again, we're hoping for a really nice fall so that we can be issuing building permits late into the fall to make up for the late um, spring start that we had. So again, our, our need for fund balance is in between 41.67% uh, and 50%. Um, the scenario, all three scenarios that we're presenting tonight are shown. Um, scenario one and two, two and a half percent and 2.75 percent increases to the levy do not quite meet those requirements um, for fund balance. So that is part of our our reasoning uh, for recommending the three. Um, the property tax levy history, I really only want to point out here, you've seen this many times before. This is a seven year uh, illustration with the 3% in 2019, if that is what adopted, the average annual increase is 2.9%. So that, that's considered um, pretty reasonable. If you watch, um, and it'll be published soon in the Star Tribune, uh, after levies are adopted, they typically publish all metropolitan cities levy increases and uh, Maplewood is typically, um, you know, at the bottom, right around that 3% range. Um, we see a lot of, um, you know, higher single digits and a lot of double digit increases. So we do think 3% is reasonable relative to, um, to other cities. This chart um, just illustrates um, how we stack up against our, our peer cities with our levy trend. It's illustrated a little bit more detailed in packet page 57 in the staff report where this, the cities are actually listed. Um, in this, on the slide, I am just representing them as average peer cities um, rather than calling them out. Um, every city has their own individual story and individual needs. Um, so just to uh, shorten it up here, um, we have a half a dozen or so cities that fall kind of right in our population range. And what I have found from working with property tax data and, and budgets for um, so many years is that a lot of city expenditures, particularly police expenditures which is and public safety expenditures, which is the primary part of the budget, over 50%, a lot of those types of expenditures are very population um, sensitive. Um, so we tend to, uh, you tend to really find when you're looking at um, cities of, when you're looking at the population of cities, you find um, th uh, that there tends to be uh, a break along certain population lines. And so that is basically what we have done is included cities uh, approximately 20% above and below. Um, our population range, because that seems to be the best comparison. Um, the takeaway from this slide is that um, Maplewood is slightly above the average population of this group, but you can see each year from 2012, relative to the other cities, Maplewood's levy is um, a lesser amount of the average. So we're continuing to be, relative to the other cities, we're continuing to bring our levy down um, as, as theirs either stay the same or go up. So in 2016, um, we were down to about average um, of these cities. We started out a little bit higher in 2012. Um, we know um, anecdotally through uh, surveys that we have done and through um, you know, looking through other sources of information that these cities, um, most of them, um, had higher levy increases in the years 2017 through 2019. Um, the league does not have that information uh, put together into a report yet, so I didn't include it, um, but we do know by doing our own monitoring every year and by looking at other sources um, that, that our levy increases is, are lower than almost everyone on this chart. So what that means is that um, we're actually probably going to see those lines crisscross and Maplewood by 2019 may even be slightly below the average for the amount, the dollar amount of the levy. 
I won't um, spend too much time on this chart. You've seen it before. Um, again, this particular chart uh, measures six years rather than seven, um, with the average increase then being 3% per year. We can, we can see uh, an you know, appreciable gain in tax capacity, 4.9%, and fiscal disparities as well, with the tax rate going down each year. So in, in looking at the city, Maplewood's tax capacity rate relative to other cities, Again, the league puts this information out. They do not have the 2017 information available. As I mentioned before, the Department of Revenue is having trouble with their database. Um, but as you can see, um, again, the city's tax capacity is continually decreasing. Um, relative to the others, um, Maplewood has been above the average in the metro area for tax capacity rate. Um, we're more, uh, more in line with what the average Minnesota city tax rate is. So this can be very complex. There's a number of factors that go into it. Um, probably the biggest factor is going to be um, the, the structure of the tax base in the community and the wealth in the community that, that makes up the tax base. Without going uh, too deeply into it, um, that chart basically just illustrates that, again, that um, Maplewood's levy or tax rate is trending down. Um, the others, um, maybe not so much. But again, this is something we'll be following and bringing back to you every year. The property tax impact of the proposed 3% levy, we did discuss this already. It's a $33 per year increase or 3.7% on the median value home. And the reason for that, again, is, is the large increase in residential value. About 6.2% caused a shift um, onto the homeowners. And we, we may see more of those shifts um, from the, the article that I read. That, that's what I expect um, that Manager Coleman mentioned, is that we may see more of those shifts in the future. Um, I will tell you that um, about half of the increase, the $33 increase, is due to factors that are outside of your control. Due to those shift factors and those legislative factors, only about half, it, half of it is really due to the spending increase. Um, I did, did want to point this out because I, um, I, I love this stuff. Um, I've been doing property taxes for 37 years, and so I, I do. Um, I was a county auditor for 21 years, so I'm, it really, really excites me. Um, but it is a 10, uh, 2010 to 2019. Um, uh, chart of a, a trend of tax impacts. So rather than talking about levies or rates or or any of those other factors, it's the actual impact. What what did the what did the average taxpayer see? Um, because the levy increase doesn't always equate to what uh, what the impact is, as you well know. Um, this year being one of them. So this really sh illustrates how badly uh, some of these peaks and valleys um, and these spikes can happen over the years. You see the, the large one in 2015 where there was a 16.4% increase in taxes for the median, median valued home. That was the year, um, and there was nothing that the city could do about it, that was the year um, where in December, um, a very, very, very large taxpayer in the city um, won a property tax appeal and, and the value was decreased significantly. It happened in the end of December after the truth in taxation was already done with and, and taxpayers were notified of a lower rate. I mean, these things happened. I've, I've seen them happen before. Um, and it took a couple of years to pull out of that. So that really had a large impact um, on, on the property taxes um, that the city really had no control over. So um, I, do, I, do, I do know this is really a source of frustration for property tax owners, property taxpayers. And I will tell you that um, they do tend to remember the spikes and not the valleys so much. When they call me and we talk about it, you know, they talk about how um, their taxes have gone up and up and up every year. And, and I tell them, you know, well, let's, let's look into it. I'll look into it for you. Because sometimes they, they forget about they had an addition to their home and um, there was, a, you know, an additional value added to their home and therefore the taxes went up. But most of the time it's that they're really forgetting that there were some valleys in there too and that there were years in which their taxes were decreased. And when I show them this long-term perspective, and I usually only do five years, they're usually um, not, not too uh, upset by the time um, we get done talking. 
And, and here is why, and um, this kind of illustrates what you can do with data. The chart on the right, um, where it says payable year and percent change, means how much of an increase or decrease um, the property tax impact had. So the average taxpayer saw that much in their property tax bill going up or down. So averaging that out um, using the last two years, meaning 2019 and 18, we'd be looking at over two years, that averages to 3% per year. You can pick whatever time frame you want. You can see how data can be distorted. But um, the last three years, 3.17. But the, the point is, over the last 10 years, the average per year is 3.77%. Um, so when taxpayers see it that way, um, they tend to accept it a little more. Again, we did, um, we do this every year. Um, we do a little bit of a survey to find out what others are doing, not that we're trying to keep up with the Joneses or, or um, follow what everybody else is doing, but it just gives us some perspective and some context as to what's going on out there. Um, so just a, a survey of um, cities who answered, the sur most, some in our peer group, some neighbors, not everyone answered it. Um, not everyone had the time to do that. Um, but you can see a number of cities, um, you know, considerably higher. Um, and I won't uh, won't go into these. Each city has their own story and their own reasons for this. Um, but it does it does kind of illustrate that we're fairly reasonable at our three percent. And so as we move into the other options, we'll, this is where we'll discuss um, how we came up with our recommendation. So we looked at a two point five percent increase. Um, that would allow that would still allow us to add a hundred thousand to fund balance as opposed to two hundred thousand. And it would still allow us to do those initiatives, hiring those cops and getting those housing inspectors working. Um, the average um, homeowner or median valued homeowner would see then an increase of twenty eight dollars as opposed to thirty three. So it's a five dollar difference, bringing that to three point one percent instead of three point seven. So that's five dollars per year, and the 2.75% option would allow an addition to fund balance of 150, um, and would be, and this is actually rounded up, it should be two and a half dollars increase, so um, from 28 to 31, it's really $30.50, but 3.4% are in that area. And so that was um, uh, one of the things that um, we thought about when we um, looked at the city's needs and and the the need to keep um, you know to keep to try to avoid those spikes to the extent that the city has control over it to tr to try to um, to keep that levy as stable as possible. We know that we're already going into next year needing to fit in um, two, two new police officers on a full-time basis rather than just half the year. So we know we've got $100,000 there. We know we have communication salaries that we need to move to the general fund. We know we want to implement a new road levy. Um, so all of those things together really helps us build, you know, the 3% helps us build capacity and we feel like the taxpayers are getting a little bit better value for their money as opposed to splitting hairs over, over $5 a year or $2.5. So in the end, our recommendation was the $33 or the 3%, 3.7%. Again, um, we are here to do the council's wish and that's what we will do. Um, but that was our recommendation. And if there are any questions, I would certainly be happy to answer them this time. Council, we have time for a discussion. I'm looking for some, I see no lights on. Uh, it's our big decision. Oh, we got one on. Council Member Smith. Are you talking about the goat more? Or? No, I'm <laughs> finished with the goat. Thank you. Um, <laughs> the, uh, uh, I, I think the way I look at this is, uh, this is the pr preliminary levy, so we have some time to consider it. I think uh, the three percent to me makes sense. Um, I mean, really, five dollars a year is fifty cents a month. Uh, it's about a penny a day, a uh, penny and a half a day. Um, I think that to guarantee our ability to hire two more cops, get our financial house even further into order, it, it seems worth it to me. Um, you know, I'm not unaware of the fact that there's other taxing authorities that, that impact property taxes that are outside of our control, but I feel like if the range is $5 a year for an average homeowner, that seems, uh, 
the juice is worth the squeeze, I think, from my perspective, and, and we still have some time to continue to talk through that, but um, that's where I'm at. Okay. Thank you. Council Member Zhang. Thank you, Mayor. Um, yes, in, in terms of the preliminary, setting the preliminary tax levy, I would, I would be in favor of 3% too. Um, and I think the key word you hit on it was, you know, the residents getting the, the value for their money. Um, I know there are, are a list of things that we really want to look at, and I think uh, giving us that room and some time to talk about it in more detail once uh, we get closer to voting for it. So I, I'd be in favor of the 3% too. Thank you. Council Member Thank Juneman. You, Thank you, myself as well. Um, the 3% gives us the things we have said over the long haul that we want. Our own financial policy says that we want to keep the fu fund balance healthy. We don't want to roll it back. Um, it's the slippery slope. Um, I also think that $5 is more than absorbable. And once again, I will say we all sit, who sit here, all pay taxes in Maplewood and all paid the same taxes that everybody else does from the other taxing authorities, and we have to just do it. It's the way it is. Um, unlike the rest of you, however, I've lived on a, <laughs> shall we say, restricted income for quite some time now. It isn't only the hair that's gray. Um, and it's doable, but you have to, you do have to say that first things come first. And that taxes are among the first things you pay because that's how you stay in your house. So if it means you're not doing some other things, oh well, I'm kind of used to it now. Um, and I always tell people when they ask about this or say, well, taxes are so high, I always ask them to go down their tax statement and make note of which one is, has the largest lump. I do believe it's the layer right above us, referred to as the County of Ramsey, who oh, coincidentally are the same people that set valuations on our properties talk about a trap um, but that's where people belong if they want to go to a tax hearing if you ask me um, I actually defy the county to prove that they give the same bang for their buck that we do it just doesn't happen so I'm very much in because of what we've said we want and I'm not I don't think anybody here wants to give on the two police officers we want to go with rental licensing you know, we can't say we want things and then not be willing to fund them. Thank you, Council Member Abrams. Thank you, Mayor. I have really struggled with this. I really have. Uh, it's something that I have been hearing about and I was out on Saturday going around the neighborhoods and, and I heard about it again, about keeping our taxes down. and. Uh, you know, I really appreciate the staff effort to give us proposals at 2.5, 2.75, and 3 that all include the two police officers because I am in favor of two additional police officers. I'm also in favor of uh, the rental housing inspectors that uh, we really need in our city. Uh, my concern is that there are people out there that uh, are expressing to me the difficulty that they envision happening. And I've certainly talked to them about the, you know, the, the, the lion's share of their taxes is going to Ramsey County. We've also got the school district, we've got the watershed, uh, and there are other taxing authorities that come out on our property taxes as well. And so we are just one little piece of the pie. Uh, but when you throw in a year that we have where we're looking at such great uncertainty with uh, personal taxes, and I understand that they're very different things, but they come out of our residents' checkbooks. And so I am n not inclined to go with the 3% because we can still, I think, accomplish what we need to. Uh, I would be more in favor of setting the max at 2.75. Uh, and so I, I'm, I'm listening to what residents are telling me, and they're very concerned about the, how this is going to impact their families. Uh, they're concerned about um, how they're going to pay for all of this. And it's not just one thing. To us, it may sound, people are, you know, talking about $5 and, and like it doesn't mean anything. But uh, when you add all of that up in... Uh, along with the other taxing authorities that are going to be included on those 
property tax statements and the unknowns that we're facing in personal taxes. Uh, you know, I just I'm going to take a stand and and go with what I'm hearing from residents that I'm I want it to be under three percent, and I want to see that we can do that. And B, we I still am very concerned that we provide excellent service and quality of service. Uh, and I think that we do that, and I think that we can do that at 2.75. So I'm leaning towards less as our maximum and really looking at what we can do because I s certainly am hearing about it when I'm out there. So okay, so the council has weighed in. Now I have a couple of questions for you, right? Obviously, this is not the next vote, which requires five but as long as we have a majority of the council, we can pass this. So right now we have three threes and a 2.75. Um, you know, uh, Ms. Paul says, since your passion is property taxes, <laughs> I don't know if you can speculate at all on Ramsey County, but it just seems like this wild, the valuations go up and the, you know, how they're, they're just changing things around all the time. So we basically are paying more on the whole, but any thoughts on, their rationale or did you happen to watch it or see their meeting? Yes, I did. Um, what I can tell you, Mayor Slawick, is that um, the county is already settled on a 4.3% increase. Uh, the school district, I am not sure yet. I have not heard. Um, but considering the way that the taxes are, 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 are split up or allocated, um, Ramsey County being getting the largest share, Maplewood getting about 32%, I think it is, um, of the total tax bill. Um, and the school getting the balance um, and the special districts getting a small amount actually. Um, I would expect that if the school held the line um, with three or three and a half percent that we would still be seeing an overall tax increase of less than four. Okay, thank you. And then if we, as the three council members have said three, does that mean up to 3.5? Does that mean 3.0? Does, is there your interpretation would be the three that's described in this. Yes, uh, Madam Mayor, the 3% the would be a $644,000 increase over last year, which would be a tax levy of 22109600 And again, that is the maximum levy. Um, it can be reduced. I'm going to ask the city manager for clarification. Um, I think, Mayor, the question that you're asking, I don't have the page in front of me, but I think what the mayor is talking about is the tax impact to the different types of housing, value housing. So mm -hmm. our 3% levy could result in a 3.7% increase Correct. for a particular homeowner because of the value of their home. Yes. And that, well, and also just that we, sometimes a three is anything below 3.5 and sometimes a four is anything between 3.5 and four but I didn't no, know we're, we're, we're sticking with three. three okay yeah. so people need to understand and, that, and for think. everyone else too I think it you, it's really a complex system and part of the problem is that Ramsey County decides where the market changes are going to be so one year it's business and, and commercial and next year it's industrial sometimes it hits the lower income houses like this year that's getting hit a little bit harder or it's the higher income houses and we don't know until the very you know we knew it about three weeks ago and so that makes it very difficult for us to plan but we we really have no control over that and that, that's very frustrating. I can see where it'd be frustrating for you as well, trying to make policy uh, on last minute information like that. So what I'd like to do is talk a little bit about my philosophy on taxes and then uh, go ahead and take the vote. Um, you know, taxes are what pays for our city services. Um, usually start out with, if you like the roads you drive on, but that's a tough one in Maplewood. But a lot of you with those new roads like them, and we are working. I mean, this, this really, we are working on the roads quite hard and to make sure that everybody um, is getting their roads uh, serviced. If you like um, your police being there, if you like your, if you're going to, you know, you've had a stroke or a heart attack, and I go around, they want to make sure that the emergency medical services are there. If your house is on fire, and we have a fire not uh, too far from here, um, you want to make sure the firemen or fire people are there. Um, the city provides these services. You know, our services, as they say, are really close to the people. And taxes are part of a democracy. And it's part of what we all pay in, and then we all get something out of it. We just don't know when our time is, right, that we might have to draw on it more. Um, I've also been around the neighborhoods, and I have heard 
um, a lot. I have heard several concerns about taxes, and it's interesting because in South Maplewood, where properties might be worth more, they'll say, "Oh, my taxes are so high," and you know what? They are high, too. and even but then we'll go into other areas, and they'll say, "My property taxes are so high," and for that area, they're high too. And it's all relative to Councilman and Councilmember Juniman's point to what your income is, right? And so. I just hope um, residents understand that we think about this, that we're having a, a thoughtful discussion, and that we have to balance the needs of the residents with the with protecting um, you, uh, with protect, you know helping the streets, with providing the services that you need, um, and also all of us are are doing it and balancing it with our pocketbooks as well. And so I am also going to weigh in at three. Uh, and with that, does somebody have a recommended motion prepared? Councilmember Juniman, Smith, Zhang. Um, I move we adopt a resolution setting a preliminary tax levy for taxes payable in 2019 of 22,109,600,000, which is 3%, and setting the 2019 budget hearing for December 10th, 2018 at 7 p.m. Second, Second sorry. Been moved by Councilmember Smith and seconded by Councilmember Juniman. A motion to adopt the resolution <coughs> setting a preliminary tax levy for taxes payable in 2019 of two, 22 million one hundred nine thousand six hundred and setting the 29 budget hearing for December 10th, 2018 at 7 o'clock p.m. Is there any further discussion? Councilmember Abrams. One other point that I wanted to throw in there is that in looking at, you know, you're talking about the median home at three point, the effect would be 3.7%. I'm looking at the most modest home that we have, the impact is actually 6%. And when you add the county and you add the school district, uh, we look at a different number. And so I, that's one of the things that, that I'm focusing on. So anyway. Thank I you. Any other points? And it is, I mean, it affects all of our, our um, folks differently. And of course, properties are different and incomes are different. And that's why it's always a kind of a jumbled system as well as with all these different, different jurisdictions. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. nay. Hearing four ayes and one nay, the motion and the uh, preliminary property tax levy is approved. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. With that, we'll go on to our last item of business, which is the ordinance repealing the Police Civil Service Commission, which takes five votes. City Manager Coleman. Thank you, Mayor Slawick, members of the City Council. Um, we're asking you to consider a ordinance tonight that would repeal the Civil Service Commission. Um, and a motion is required, and as the mayor indicated, it does require five votes. In way of background, um, city staff, including um, Chief Nadeau, uh, Ms. Rameau, and Mike Funk, met with our three members of the Civil Service Commission members for the purpose of discussing uh, the recruiting challenges we've had regarding the timeliness of the hiring process, and I believe Councilmember Juniman had a discussion with some of staff on this as well. Um, in many cases, it can take us an additional four to eight weeks to hire a police officer. And that's compared to hiring other city positions. And this really poses a real risk of losing our top candidates. And we came very close to doing that here just recently, uh, which was the reason we kind of put this in full speed ahead because we felt like we were losing some good candidates because of the time frame it takes to run through the commission. Um, so they met and all of the three commissioners agreed that this process was not in the city's best interest um, and does not position us well for recruiting the best talent. So that was a, a great meeting and a great outcome. As such, they support dissolving the civil service, a police civil service commission. Uh, one of the things that was brought up as a concern was that there somehow be involvement of the public. Uh, and that that would remain in the hiring process. And in fact, uh, Mr. Funk did change the language in our city's personnel policy to memor memorialize the fact that we would bring in uh, members or residents of the community to help in the hiring process. 
Uh, while the civil service was once an important way to screen potential employees and ensure fair treatment, professional hire, hiring practices and statutory hiring requirements, now labor um, contracts, I'm sorry, read that a little wrong, but now we have other ways to do this. And one is that we have labor contracts in place and we have professional hiring practices and actually new state law that dictates how we hire police officers. So uh, we really um, do not need their help as we once did when it was first commissioned. So according to state law, this action requires all five members of the city council to vote for the ordinance. We would also recommend that we, um, at a future meeting, recognize Lisa Liddell, Deborah Burkholz, and Jim Meehan for their years of service um, and thank them uh, for their work and the great service that they provided for our community. So we are asking you to adopt the uh, ordinance on page 80, packet page 80 of uh, 80, or no, page number of 80, uh, which will in effect uh, repeal the Civil Service Commission. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Uh, Chief Nadeau can also answer as well. Thank you, good report. I know Council Member Duneman, you've been on the commission, so I think we're eager to <laughs> Uh, hear your viewpoint on this. I think that is, of course, we're, it's important we keep up on current hiring practices. Council Member Um Certainly, eight years ago, I would never have envisioned the day when I would be the one that's in favor of this. Um, that was a very important part of my um, services community in my mind, and part of it is I grew up with it. My father was also on the Civil Service Commission. And in the early days, it was very important because, as she, the city manager has said, we didn't have the same hiring practices. There weren't, wasn't the same statutory support for those practices. Um, and you don't want just anybody <laughs> walking in off the street and becoming a peace officer. So it was very, very important. And so, but I have heard from, even back when uh, Chief Schnell was still here and certainly since Chief Nadeau has been here, it's become a stumbling block to hiring the best people. And so now it's having the opposite effect of what we needed it for initially. So um, not wanting to be part of that, uh, we certainly want to get the best that we can. And um, the, their own um, educational requirements have also been upped. That was one of the things we were doing mainly in the 90s when I was there, is that at that time there wasn't a strict educational requirement to become a police officer, and now there is. So some of their most important functions have basically been um, taken into law and then our own hiring practices uh, are certainly a lot stricter than they used to be. So much as it theoretically would pain me to do this, I think it's the wisest move we can make. And I really thank um, Mr. Funk and Terry and the city manager for meeting with our current commissioners because I, that was an important piece of input. And it would be difficult to be one of those people and all of a sudden, well, you're done now. <laughs> we don't need you anymore. Um, but I think they also know that their service has been very important in the past, and they understand why this has to be done. So I, you know, I, I think we have no choice. I, like I said, it's, it has served its purpose for a long time. But now that it's getting in the way, we need to take it away and let the chief and our HR department go about hiring the best people we can find for these jobs. Good, good discussion. I just want to clarify for the public that we have very few things that require five votes. And uh, there are laws about us talking about votes before we vote. And so when we go into a night like tonight, I do not know what the outcome is. We have not uh, visited with each other um, about that. And so it's important we're all listening carefully to the And this discussion. is a statute, so that's why it takes five votes for us to erase it, so to speak, because this is written in statute when you are a civil service city. It takes everyone to take it out of that category. And, and yes, and part of it is us is trusting the staff, and then we also, it's about uh, having peer trust. You know, Councilman, Council Member Juneman has been the expert uh, council member on this, and so to, it's important we listen, at least for me, I'm listening carefully to her opinion. Council Member Abrams. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I actually did some research on police civil service commissions for my day job uh, in terms of recommending and, and advising my clients. And I, when I did this research about a year ago, I likened police civil service commissions to buggy whips. 
I, I think that uh, if I remember right, and I didn't go back and look at any of this, but police civil service commissions, the statute enacting them actually I think came from the 1940s. I think that there are maybe less than a half a dozen. I think it's... Yeah, it's less than that now. I think it was either five or six that are actually left. Yes, okay. uh, because they are very much like buggy whips. Back when the Police Civil Service Commission statute was created, we didn't have uh, public sector uh, uh, unions, contracts. We didn't have any of that. We didn't have the Americans with Disabilities Act. We didn't have the Human Rights Act. We didn't have any of that. And so they were. it was really created as a means to try to create fairness in hiring in the public sector. And now we have all of these other laws and procedures. You know, there isn't, I don't think, any other uh, job in the public sector that is more uh, uh, um, regulated than police and hiring police officers as far as what we have to do in terms of hiring a, a police officer, in terms of what the requirements are and such. And so uh, I am completely in support of this. I think it's time to get rid of the buggy whip. And I'm glad that we're doing it because that is exactly what's happening out there is that it's a very competitive market in law enforcement. And if you have a process that is really an impediment uh, to getting good candidates, uh, you know, there are uh, many departments uh, out there looking for police officers and everyone wants the best one. And if it's a competitive market, then we can't wait an additional four to eight weeks and not tell someone uh, where they are in our hiring process. And so I think it's a great idea. Uh, it's time we need to get rid of the buggy whip. So thank you. Council Member Smith. Thank you, Mayor. Um, <clears throat> you know, I think as you come on to the council as a new member, you learn a lot really fast. and. I remember uh, sitting down with former Chief Schnell and he was going through the hiring process at that time and, and there was this big binder on his, on his desk and I said, wow, that's a big binder for all those applications. And he said, no, this is one application. <laughs> and so, I mean, just the amount of, of work and paperwork and research and due diligence that goes into hiring one police officer is a tremendous amount of work. And I think that was something I learned uh, pretty quickly. So I think anything we can do to make that process quicker, easier, and more efficient, I'm supportive of. Um, I also want to thank Councilmember Juneman because I know how passionate she's been about this issue. And I know she just said she couldn't believe eight years ago that she'd be supporting this. Frankly, I couldn't have believed eight weeks ago <laughs> that she'd be supporting this. And, but I think uh, really shows uh, an open mind and, uh, um, and, and uh, willingness to uh, look at this in, 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 in light of the current situation. So I really appreciate that. And uh, cause it is something we're gonna have to work together on if we're gonna do so. Thank you. Council member Zhang. Um, thank you, mayor. Um, for, and I think for this one, like uh, thank you for reiterating how important it is. All five votes has to go into this. Um, and this one we're relying a lot on, you know, our police commissioners who have volunteered their time to work with us, Chief Schnell, um, and Kathy Juneman on their input on this and how it impacts our hiring process. And, you know, it's hiring police officer is very important for every, any city and especially important for our city and our commitment to our police force and our community. And so uh, I be, would be in favor of this. Okay, thank you. Uh, Chief Nadeau, any words of uh, wisdom? Up, uh, Director Nadeau as well. Mayor and Council, I'll, I'll let you judge whether or not they're words of wisdom, but okay. I was um, uh, kind of reflecting back on, on civil service and why it was important and political patronage and, and what must have been going on in the in the 50s and the 60s with new mayors or councils that would come in and, and you know, that this was so necessary. Uh, and, um, you know, in today, and it's been reiterated uh, time and again, with uh, statutory requirements and professional HR uh, uh, departments and, and even the background investigations that uh, Councilmember Smith referenced that you know are you know a dossier uh, where we talk to neighbors, we talk to high school teachers, we talk to college teachers, we talk to uh, you know spouses or significant others, we talk to ex-spouses, right? We really want that that in-depth view of who this person is. And so, um, yeah, I do think that this is the right move. I will say that our three commissioners and those who have served before have done so admirably. 
They've been uh, incredibly cooperative. They could not have been uh, uh, just uh, more open to um, you know, meeting when we needed to meet. Um, this last process probably helped to seal it for me because we had a person uh, who uh, was in our process. She was also being backgrounded by Maple Grove, and she was also at the chief's interview level with, I think it was Eden Prairie. And um, I think we gave her the longest conditional offer ever. If the civil service meets and approves you, and we can get you through the background, and I mean, it was just one of those things that showed that um, our process had to be more competitive. And, and luckily, we were able to, to grab onto that candidate, and she's not one of our officers, but I certainly uh, appreciate the, the council's uh, discussion and diligence in looking into this. Okay, thank you. So uh, last, I just wanted to again uh, thank Council Member Juneman. Thank you. I also want to say um, to the public, uh, whether you're here in the audience or you're at home and you have any questions about any of this, uh, well, why did the council make that decision? Please call anybody on the council, any of the staff uh, related to any of these issues tonight, and we will talk to you about that and, and offer our opinions and uh, talk through that. We may not always agree in see eye to eye, but we're more than willing to talk about that. We're very accessible. Um, also, just to reiterate, and uh, the council is governed by open meeting laws. We do not talk to each other about issues uh, that we will be voting on. And so um, I think everybody's positive. So I think, I think we're going to get the vote here. But um, it's important that the public understands that it's not the legislature where we all go into a caucus and we say, hey, let's all vote like this. But we are very um, independent. We uh, feel really lucky we have a council that does its homework. You can see we have also have a, count, a passionate council. With that, is there a motion? Um, with respect to and thanks to our city, seating, excuse me, seated commissioners, I move to approve the ordinance repealing the Police Civil Service Commission. That would be Chapter 2, Article 4, Division 3 of the City Code regarding the Police Civil Service Commission. It's been moved by Juneman and seconded by Abrams, a motion to approve the ordinance repealing the Police Civil Service Commission. Is there any further discussion? Council Member Juneman. Again, I want to thank the three seated commissioners because I know this must have been a little bit difficult, but they too could see that it needed to change. So we appreciate their service and we also appreciate their willingness to give this consideration and give us their, um, shall we say, okay. Well said and I think we all uh, agree with you. With that, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Hearing 5-0, oh, the motion passes. And with that, anything else, members? It's 8.33, almost a 19-minute meeting. What was the record, Council Member Smith? 12. Oh, 12 minutes. A little bit longer than that, but uh, have a good night. And again, if you need any more information, give us a call or email us. Thank you. Thank you.